Hello, thank you very much that you join us today with uh, the lesson number 11 from the Spiritual High School of Spiritual Science like it was given by Rudolf Steiner 1924. So beginning at the beginning I will start with some words out of the mystery drama from Rudolf Steiner, the portal of initiation, the first of four given parts. The light's weaving being, it shines up through space wasteness to fill the world with being. The love's blessing, it warms the sequence of time to call forth revelation to all worlds. And spirit messengers come forth to wet the light weaving being with revelation of the soul. And if can wet to both the human, his very self, he lives in spirit heights. And in a transformation of this, Benedictus, who is telling us this, again will say these words. The light's weaving being, it shines up from human to human to fill all worlds with truth. The love's blessing, it warms the soul at the soul to create all worlds salvation. And spirit messengers come forth to wet the human's Blessing works to world's aims. And when can wet this both that human who finds himself in human radiates spiritual light through the warmth of soul. And we will start again with the first word. O man, know yourself, so resounds the world word. You hear it, soul powerful, you feel it, spirit wasteness. Who speaks so world wastely? Who speaks so felt heartily? Does it act through space distance radiation? In your senses being experience? Does it sound through time's wave weaves? into your life's evolving stream. Is it you, yourself, who in space feeling, in experiencing time, creating the world, feeling for him, sensing in space's emptiness of soul? because you have the force of thinking, losing in the time-destroying stream. Lesson 11 
My dear friends, you have all probably been deeply affected this morning by the news that Miss Marion has departed from the physical plan. Also, it is something long expected and which follows difficult suffering which lasted more than a year. Tomorrow, when the members of the Anthroposophical Society are all gathered here, I will say what I have to say about Miss Marion's departure from the physical plan. For now it is sufficient to say that the first class has lost a truly dedicated student for among those who have devoted themselves to the school with great diligence. Miss Marion was the best despite the serious illness which afflicted her. She not only participated in what is being esoterically developed here but she also let the exercises give her work on her and lived with them in an extraordinarily intimate way. This was the result of her having been familiar with esotericism before coming to us. She belonged to an esoteric school of a completely different nature before she discovered the Anthroposophical Society. And through this esoteric school made the complete transition to Anthroposophy quickly. The esoteric was essential to her and she experienced it intensely during the years with us on the physical plane. She has departed from the physical plane, but certainly not from anthroposophy. It would be unseemly to say more now, as she has just left the physical plane. Tomorrow, though, when the members, the friends are here, it will be my task to say what is to be said. My dear friends, in esoteric striving, it is necessary to at least envision to the extent possible the path upon which real knowledge of spiritual things can be realized. Of course, how far one or the other comes along, this path depends on the, his karma on what conditions he brings along from previous earth lives. But not only that, it also depends on which physical and environmental conditions the person's destiny places him. Much old karmic residue may exist to be worked out which hinders a acquiring everything which is otherwise within one's capabilities. Thus much which perhaps could be quickly acquired without these karmic residues takes longer. My dear sisters and brothers, we should never give up hope never lose patience of energy but continue on our way when the right time has come we will surely find what has been predestined for certain lines of every human being's life paths are uniquely predestined despite or perhaps because of freedom every individual is called to his life's task and can accomplish this with sufficient goodwill. Here, in this free school for spiritual science, 
everything has existed in the mysteries in the past when they especially flowered is to be re-enacted in the correct form according to our time and to the future. The flowering time of the mysteries had already passed when the greatest mystery of all, the one most hidden to the world history took place, the mystery of Golgotha. After their flowering time, the mysteries disliked a process in which just because the mysteries had disliked, humanity could be taken into the stream of world evolution where freedom is possible. Nevertheless, the time has now come when the mysteries are to be renewed in the fullest sense of the word and in the appropriate form. In once these things have been thought about correctly in the future, the Kurtianum's work will be appreciated in the world, because the task of this Kurtianum is to renew the mysteries, and only, my dear sisters and brothers, if we are permeated with the will to understand this school as representing through, through us a renewal of mysteries, can we participate in the mysteries and in the school in the right way. If you will remember what was presented here in the last lesson, then what I have just said to, can live in your hearts, for the transition is made for meditation to really empty, enter directly into the individual's experience so that he frees himself from the narrow limits of his personality. In the triple-versed structure of the last meditation, we saw how we place ourselves in the world process and how in the meditation we confront not only what sounds from our soul, but also what sounds to our soul, which in a certain way incorporates itself into a general universal language, a general universal world. But only when the individual gradually frees himself from the limits of his personality, when he finds himself meditating in an ever more objective way, then will he be able to follow that intimate, subtle path, which is the true path to human knowledge. But for this to happen, the objective truths which apply to humanity must become objectively present in him in the most varied ways. You all know, my dear sisters and brothers, what has often been described as the threefold human nature. The nerve sensory man, mostly represented by the human head. The rhythmic man, mostly represented by the breast, in which the respiratory and circulatory organs are concentrated. All these organs are everywhere in the organism, are located in other parts of the body as well, but more in certain areas than in others. Then we have the limbs, metabolism, organization, localized downwards and outwards. That which can be known theoretically can also be meditatively objective. And when it is meditatively objective, it became, becomes esoteric. 
Therefore, in meditation, we must intensively and intimately keep this threefold man in view. So we have the head organization, a real replica of the entire cosmic. We have the breast or rhythmic organization, which does not directly show in its form the cosmic image, and at least of all does the limbs metabolism organization show the image of the cosmos. But man must be intimately conscious of how he places himself in the cosmos. Through each of these organizations, he must be clear about what takes place in his head. We can feel this directly. When we think our head is active, we notice that when the head is ailing, thinking is impaired. We sense the head's association to this clearest human earthly activity in both normal and abnormal circumstances. This does not mean that the head is really the barrier of the clearest human earthly activity, but it seems so to us. What is actually going on? When do we see all ourselves in our heads in the right way? Only, my dear sisters and brothers, when we are aware that this human head would not exist if the star-filled sky did not arc above us, for the moment we will not dispute what the astronomer, astronomers say about this, we are only taking into account what is visible to the eyes, the sublime starry heaven. In the previous lesson much was said about this, the stars are there above, their rays of lights approach us when we look up at them. But they don't only approach us, we also receive them. And what we receive of the rays of light we enclose in our heads. And out of it sprouts our human activity on earth, our thinking. And so we must imagine outside other stars our heads receive the effects of the star's rays. From without it looks as though the stars were sending the rays down to us. Our heads receive the rays, so what has been received is within our heads. From here it looks quite different than from without. But, in, but it is the same, the whole starry sky rolled together, so to speak, within our heads. But only the starry sky, no, not only the starry sky, for what are the stars? What is in the individual stars which rays toward us? It is the domicile of the gods. They are the places where the gods reside. If is, it is where the gods were sought in the times when instinctive clairvoyants knew where the gods reside, which are the places worthy of the gods. During the times when such clairvoyance exists, people did not look up at burning points in the cosmos, but at the dwelling places of the gods, to the home of gods. And in doing so, had a truer idea of what exists in the far reaches of space than do the astronomers of today who observe the points of light 
and calculate their positions and angels to each other. But in that man he is a threefold being. He speaks and acts through what holds him together, his I. Through all three elements of his being, through the nerve sensory system, the head, through the rhythmic system, the breast, through the metabolic lymph system, it is held together only because the physical body is a unity. But man always sends his eye into the three individual elements. And we will learn today the different ways he sends his eye into the individual elements. My fur, at first man speaks, the eye through his thoughts into his head from his innermost being. Truly it is thus, it will be drawn the blackboard, what unfolds without as the shining element of the stars, a blue arc and yellow stars above. Act in the human head, a yellow arc and rays from the stars. It is also here within, red dots in the head, Man speaks his eye from out of his center of his being into this rolled together cosmic space, which is the interior of his head, the arrows with the word I yellow. And he should become aware that when he speaks his eye into the part of his humanity, which is an image of the drawings of the gods, then the gods themselves who live in these home places will act in him. We meditate correctly when we are aware that when we say I, through the force of our heads, the gods of cosmic space and cosmic time speak in us. And this is not a teaching given to us on the earth. It is a teaching, my dear sisters and brothers, given to us by the beings of the higher hierarchies themselves. At first from those beings who are with us humans, the Angeloi, and in the background the directing archangelois. This element of human nature, this I, has a relation to the dueling places of the gods in the radiant stars, from out of which the godly being themselves speaks and should let itself be thought by the beings. We have always referred to as Angeloi in our descriptions of the hierarchies of the angels. We correctly accomplish a meditation thus. We look up, allowing ourselves to be impressed by the radiance of the stars, sense the cosmic space itself is sending us words, and these words should be Cosmic Stars Feeds, or I will say World Stars Fields, God's Home Places. It resounds in the periphery, thus we imagine that we hear it from cosmic space. World stars, fields, gods, home, places. It becomes an echo in us. We treat it as a call, but a call that exists us, it, that excites us, because all heaven resounds in that call. 
this is how we meditate and then we will be conscious of what we have to say from the depths of our soul from thence in the stillness we answer the cosmic trumpet call speaks in head height human spirit radiation the i am that is what we say. Then the angel who comes to us answers in our meditation. Thus you live, the gods, in the earthly body as human being. That is the sense of this meditation. We hear it as a world spanning trumpet call from all sides. World, stars, fields, gods, home, places. We answer in stillness, intimately praying. Speaks in head height, human spirit radiation, the I am. The angel answers looking upwards to the source of the trumpet call. Thus you live in the earthly body as human being. We accept these last two lines which the angel speaks in our meditation as teaching. And the first verse will be written on the board. Worlds, stars, fields, gods, home, places, speaks in head height, human spirit radiation, this called together stereo radiance, the human radiance, the I am, the spiritual teacher Angelos, thus you live. World, stars, fields, gods, home places, in the earthly body as human being. That is the first dialogue with the cosmos and with the third hierarchy. Seen this way, it is a deeply penetrating meditation on the human spirit, human soul and human body. Now we go further in the rhythmic organization of man. We think of the lungs and the heart, the wonderful pulsation, the rhythms of breathing, which by its very nature reveals that it is the expression of the deepest cosmic laws, the movement of which we sense in us. When we concentrate in meditation on our head, we sense rest. When we meditate on our breast, we feel movement. And this movement is an image of the movement of the planets of the Moon, the Sun, of Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, but a representative of this movement is the Sun. It is closest to us. Every day it circles around our Earth in appearance. It can therefore stand as representative, but just as we carry within us the world, stars, fields, 
God's home races hold together, so also the movement of the whole planetary system represented by the sun in our breathing, in our blood circulation, in everything which is movement in our organism. Therefore we must imagine that just as the sublimity of the tooling of the gods, God's home places, was announced by the trumpet calls from all sides of the cosmos, all for what the movement of the planets represented by the sun, have to say through melodies, sounds, curses through our bodies. World, suns, circles, spirits, acting, ways. That is the second thing, stillness in comparison. to the loud trumpet call of the cosmic surroundings. World stars, fields, God's home places. It resounds majestically from all sides. That is what we must meditate on. But following on that path of the sun and the other planets in our breathing, and in our blood circulation, it resounds joyfully within us. Worlds, suns, circles, spirits, acting, ways. Now we say intimately from within us, if we take an inducement, what sounds melodiously from the star circles into our own bodies. Sounds in the heart's middle, human soul weaving. The I live. The Angelos replies, speaking to the gods in the circling planets. Thus you stride in earthly changing as human creative force. Just as the human being lives in the earth to, by means of what radiates into him from the drawings of the gods, so does the human creative evolutionary force live by means of the activity of the gods in the planet's movement, which is also received into man's rhythmic system. Thus we have again the threefold verse, objective murmur through our body in the sense of the planet's curse, our own intimate speech, the Angelos reply. World, suns, circles, spirit acting ways, sounds in the heart's middle, human soul weaving, the I live. Thus you stride in earthly changing, a human creative force. These lines will be written on board. World, suns, circles, spirits, acting, ways, sounds in the heart's middle. Above speaks, hears sounds. Above head, held high, 
dear heart's middle. Human soul weaving the I live. Above I am, here I live. Thus you stride in earthly changing as human creative force. Each of these verses must be felt as beings refold in their coming into being. The objective resounding our own intimate speech as the echo which us within us, the speech of the angelos, then it works correctly in us. However, when we come to the third element of man, what lives in the arms and legs and continues inward in metabolism, then we do not hear the trumpet calls from the cosmos, then we do not hear the melodiousness of the planets, then we hear the dull rumbling of the world foundation itself. It is what makes us earth people. The limbs do not participate in our spiritual being. They are completely shaped according to the earthly forces. The arms and hands are only partly shaped by the air forces, but otherwise all is shaped by the forces that arise from out of the cosmic foundations and flow up through human beings. We must be conscious of this, just as we hear in the first verse the language of the cosmos itself in the majestatic tones coming from the cosmic periphery, as we hear the speech of the periphery in the second verse, we hear the rumbling speech of cosmic foundation from the depths of the earth in the third verse. Worlds, grounds, powers, creators, love, radiance. It is not a luster of light, it is a love radiance. For in those places where otherwise what is in the periphery is gathered in the center is where the source of the love forces also lie. Therefore, we cannot answer in echoes, speaks, and also not sounds. Here we must answer with the deed, with what flows from the will. We must not speak, not sounds. Here we must create. Therefore, we answer from within, pouring will into our words. Creates in the body's limbs human acting streams the I will. Then the angel answers in that he lowers his eyes to what his rumbling from the cosmic foundations rumbling not in an antipathetic sense, but only in the dullness of the tone. The active forces answer which resound in the cosmic foundation steps. So you strive in earthly works as human sensory deeds. Again the threefold words. Worlds, grounds, powers, creators, love, radiance. 
creates in the body's limbs human acting streams the I will. So you strive in earthly works as human sensory deeds. This third verse will be written on the board. Worlds, grounds, powers, creators, love, radiance, creates, speaks, sounds, creates, will be underlined in the body's limbs. Height, middle, limbs, what strives from the center outwards. Human acting streams, the I will, I am, I live, I will. Thus do you strive in earthly works, earthly body, earthly changing, earthly works, as human sensory deeds, being creative force, sensory deeds, which means deeds visible to the senses, through meditation, through exercise of the soul, it is not found in the theoretical, intellectual content of a meditation verse, but in its mantric character. This mantric character is present when the meaning dissolves into situation and happening and when we free ourselves from the theoretical, from the intellectual content, go out from ourselves so that we do not merely have something value in our thoughts, but have the idea that the sky that the periphery, that the earthly depths resound, that we reply to these sounds from our own intimate inner self that the angel interprets and teaches. We should try to attain such an ideal setting that is to make meditation something in which we don't merely think, feel or will, but which also streams and weaves and radiates around us. And from all this something steps back into the life of the heart, and in the heart it is streaming, weaving, striving and vibratingly radiating so that we feel ourselves integrated in the life of the world, of the cosmos, though so that our meditation is not something that only lives in us, in our feeling, but which lives in us and the world. It extinguishes the world, extinguishes us, and in extinguishing unit us in the world, though that we can just as easily say, the world is speaking, as we can say we are speaking. This gradually enhances the char character of the meditation. If the meditation is practiced in the way by extinguishing what has always seemed to be one's ordinary self, it is possible to perceive oneself as spirit. When, however, we start along this path of knowledge, when we honestly approach such, such paths of knowledge, we learn 
that we are not alone in the world, that we are in a dialogue with the spiritual world. And through this we approach closer and closer to a renewal of the mysteries. Of course, physically, outer temples stood in the places on the earth which today are considered to be uncivilized. Outer temples stood there and early peoples needed outer temples. But these temples were not the only ones, not even the most important ones. For the most important temples have no place, have no time. One comes to them if one exercises the soul in the way that has been indicated here and in the mysteries of all times. In order to be clear, my dear sisters and brothers, if we live in such a mantric formula, it is thus. Here I stand, each of us says rightly, and all around me is the everyday world. Wash your sea, walls and chairs are around me, or perhaps a natural forest, visible trees or houses. It is all there. I am fully aware of that this is my environment. It is there and I see and touch it. But the meditation arises in my soul while I am in the external sensory world. The meditation arises in me. Worlds, stars, fields, gods, home, places, speaks in head height, human spirit radiation, the I am. Thus you live in the earthly body as human being. What do I sense moving? What do I sense arching over me? It is something, it is nothing. I sense walls, I don't see them. The meditation continues. World, suns, Circles, spirits, acting ways, sounds in the heart's middle, human soul weaving, the I live. Thus you stride in earthly changing as human creative force. What I sensed, the moving, the temple dome which arcs above, the temple walls, it is all becoming clear for the soul's sense, making the normal world invisible, the world of visible trees, Clouds, everything which before was visible, a new visibility appears, the temple, which I only sensed at first, becomes real in the second verse. And I hear the morming, the hissing and rumbling from below, cosmic foundation powers. Worlds, grounds, powers, creators, love, radiance, creates in the body's limbs, 
human acting streams. The I will, so you strive in earthly works as human sensory deeds. The temple is complete. It has acquired its foundation and in it are those spiritual beings with whom we wish to be in communion. The temple is there, visible to the souls, since it has been found. Our meditation does not contain visions. It leads us into the spiritual world. The spiritual world exists. I am describing, my dear sisters and brothers, how the meditation can proceed. The moving temple dome is sensed after the first verse. See the temple around us with the soul sense. The temple is complete and the beings with whom we wish to be in communion as humanity's teachers, the godly teachers, are there. We are within the temple, accomplished by the first, second and third words of a true mantric meditation. When we become aware that we are finding the temple, then we correctly understand what the content of the esoteric school is meant to be. Especially on this point, I will give the German mantric to this lesson. Welten, Sternen, Städten, Götter, Heimat, Orte, spricht in Hauptes Höhen, Menschen, Geistes, Strahlen, dass ich bin. So lebet ihr im Erdenleibe als Menschenwesenheit. Welten, Sonnen, Kreise, Geister, Wirkens, Wege, tönt in Herzens Mitte. Menschen, Seelen, Weben, dass ich lebe. So schreitet ihr im Erdenwandel als Menschen, Schöpfer, Kraft. Welten, Grundes, Mächte, Schöpfer Liebes glänzen, schafft in Leibesgliedern Menschen wirkens Strömung, das ich will. So strebet ihr im Erdenwerke als Menschen Sinnes Taten. Thank you. At uh, the end I will again say the first word and I also want to say that uh, some explanations to Miss Marion will be given in the text part to this video.
O man, know yourself, so resounds the world, world. You hear it so powerful, you feel its spirit wasteness. Who speaks so world fastly, who speaks so felt earthly? Does it act through space distant radiation in your senses being experience? Does it resound through time's wave weaves into your life's evolving stream? Is it you yourself who in space feeling in experiencing time, creating the world, feeling for in, sensing in spaces emptiness of soul, because you have the force of thinking, losing in the time destroying stream. Thank you very much.